Hi everyone, my name is Nina Gradia. I'm a somatic experiencing practitioner on the non-dual path. Today I want to address a very important topic that is often talked about in spiritual circles with a bit of an assumption sometimes. And um, I want to open up a discussion as well as share my thoughts on this. So I've had a couple people tell me on this journey that it's not okay to have boundaries if you're on the non-dual path. And I think that that's a red flag. And um, the people who told me this, I, I felt that um, there was not a respect for the boundaries I was very kindly putting up over and over again. But I want to address why I think we should have boundaries, even if we're on the non-dual path. So first of all, our bodies are limited, are they not? Even if we are unlimited infinite consciousness, we are confined to these material limited bodies. I understand bodies can have more capacity when we are awakened or when we are in such a mind that we are self-realized, but our body still has these needs that are dependent on food, water, and it has a limited capacity. And I have confirmed this with my teacher, Ryan, who told me, he said, hey, you put me on a treadmill, you know, for hours, I'm going to get tired. And even though he's emotionally pretty much invincible, like he can handle whatever emotions, he can feel it through, he's not going to buy into it, you know, all those things. Um, I mean, he's basically at the point where if he feels even anger, it just goes through him in a flash of a second because there's no resistance. So his baseline emotional um, feelings are the four immeasurables in Buddhism. So compassion, equanimity, sympathetic joy, meaning if you're happy, he's so happy for you and loving kindness or metta. So that's his baseline experience. But even he will say, yeah, even though I can handle whatever comes at me, the body is still limited in capacity. So it's really been very eye-opening for me because I might've had some ideas too of what does enlightenment mean? And doesn't that mean you can handle anything? And so getting to talk with him for all this time and just, okay, so what's it like? And how is this? And how do you, you know? And so I've, I've learned these things that I think it's important to share with people who are on the path so that we have reasonable expectations of each other so because this body is limited and we're going to have a limited amount of capacity, and for those of us who are not yet where Ryan is, we're especially going to need to be able to advocate for ourselves because only I know what I'm feeling in my body and what my capacity and limits are. If I'm very sick, no one should expect me to run a marathon. But when I was sick many times, I had some expectations from a couple of people <laughs> who thought I was not allowed to have boundaries because don't you know you're not separate and you, you know you're on this path and wow like you know how come you're you know? <laughs> and um I don't think that's an appropriate request now granted that's that's just a couple of people but everyone else I know including Ryan including you know, all these people that I speak with who are on this path, who are very far along, all of us probably have the highest boundaries I've ever seen. And we all respect each other's very high boundaries. And we're all extremely compassionate and giving and generous with our time at the same time. Because if I'm taking care of myself and I have boundaries when I'm sick, I, I take that time out for myself and everyone respects that. Then when I am feeling better, and I want to give because that feels really good for me. I'm going to have the means to do that if I've been able to take care of myself. And so that's kind of what I've noticed, that it's the people who you don't really have to even assert the boundaries with so much. They, they, they're just going to respect your boundaries, which is most people, 90% <laughs> of people are just going to respect your boundaries. And then there's going to be just a small percentage that may not, but those are the people who you needed to tell those boundaries to. And when they react in a certain way that might not be accepting or might be aggressive back, 
um, then you can be happy that you set those boundaries because that's where you needed them. And so I think this is so important for people to realize because I think many of us understand this kind of in a, um, in a vague general way, but the exact reason that I'm stating for this is that our body capacity is always changing. If I've gotten a good sleep last night and I've eaten a good meal and I'm not dealing with health issues and I'm feeling great, I'm at a very high capacity state. I can handle more than I normally can, but that doesn't mean I can handle an infinite load either. <laughs> and so we all need to be trusted in advocating for ourselves and knowing what we're feeling in our bodies and establishing the boundaries so that we can take care of ourselves. When someone continuously is boundary busting or steamrolling, they're not allowing us to take care of ourselves. And if, and if we can't get away from that, I think it's abusive. And I think it's um, condescending. It's, it's not <laughs> allowing the person, it's not believing the person that can take care of themselves and they know when to say yes and when to say no. Um, I think it's a huge red flag for lack of empathy. And um, sometimes it's just a lack of understanding, but when you explain yourself over and over and over and the person is feeling entitled to your time and energy and unlimited requests that they're making of you, th that is a red flag and something to be aware of. And you can, you can tell yourself that you've got the right to these boundaries and not gaslight yourself. Because originally when I was on this path, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know that it was okay in the sense that I, I was trying to see myself as not a separate self identity, not an ego identity, not an individuated identity. And I wanted to, you know, kind of be in that I'm all of this. And so I wasn't really sure myself until I got more training in SE and in the body capacity, as well as talking to Ryan about this. And so I want you to kind of know you are allowed and that you have that it doesn't mean you're not on the path because this path that I'm talking about especially on this channel is really two parallel paths that we're walking you know simultaneously and going back and forth as we need so one is this non-dual path if that resonates for you of seeing who I am what's my real identity I am this infinite consciousness that is all of this and I'm not separate from others or any of this but then the second part is I am in this limited relative state right now in this body and the feelings I'm feeling are real and traumas, these stored, saved emotional patterns in my body, those are real. And I want to feel them through and integrate them and not spiritually bypass. And it's really important to do that. And that needs to be done in titrated ways where I can manage what's coming up for me and process it in a way that's not re-traumatizing, in a way that's beneficial, in a way that's liberating. So Ryan would call these two paths self-realization, as in this says knowing who I am, infinite consciousness, and liberation. Liberation work is somatic work. It's emptying the stored patterns saved in the body. So if you guys know about my chart, trauma flow chart, uh, I'll link it here for anyone who's new to the channel so you can see the full introductory video. But the thoughts, when I believe them, they create emotions that in the present time that when I resist, they will say the stored emotional patterns in my body. And so it's self-realization. I need to know who I am. I need to not think my identity is something smaller than infinite consciousness. So these are the hacks. So here it's going to be, I need to know who I am, self-realization. And then feeling through all of the stored patterns in my body, that's the liberation work, the somatic work, same thing. And so as I do that, I'm going to have less baggage in the body that's going to be influencing and kicking up my mind with more beliefs that may or may not be true. When I know who I am, when I'm self-realized, mind goes completely calm, completely blank, silent. But then our attachments that are stored in our body, when they get kicked up or triggered, when there's a trigger, we're going to have a somatic you know, experience, like our sensations are gonna kick up um, the, the traumas, but it's also gonna kick up the mind, the mind will restart. So this path, of self-realization to liberation, we're walking back and forth as we need to with that. So I know who I am. Okay, I'm doing fine for a while. A trauma gets triggered. 
oh my gosh, like, okay, I got to do my somatic work. I got to feel that through. And my mind is going to start saying stuff, a story about it. And I need to interrupt that story. And I'm going to be doing a future video called Severing the Somatic Sensation from the Story. So um, look out for that coming soon. That will go into this in more detail. But it's really important that we do that work back and forth because when the story comes up with the sensation, the mind has lost its calmness and I need to remember who I am. So then I go back to the self-realization work. I'll link a video um, about self-realization here where I interview my teacher's first student, Aloshan, and we lay out some of these introductory teachings that I'm talking about right now. But this whole video is about if it's okay to have boundaries when I'm on the non-dual path. Now, when I'm actually in non-dual state, right? I'm not going to really feel like there are boundaries. I'm going to feel like I'm one with everything. I've been there hundreds of times. It feels like you're one with all, but you still got to eat, still got to sleep, still got to drink water. And naturally, there's still a discernment about, oh, no, thank you. I need to go do this right now. Yes, but maybe in an hour. So just because there's not boundaries doesn't mean the answer to all of the questions should be, yes, 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 anything you want. I'm your slave. I'll do anything for you. <laughs> That's not how it works. Again, my teacher is like the most generous person. He's worked with me for so long now, just selflessly, but he has very high boundaries and that's, that's normal. That's what adults do, right? We say what we can and cannot do because if you're free, which is if you're on the non-dual path, you're trying to be free. If you're free, it doesn't mean you suddenly are free, except you're never allowed to have a boundary. You're not free there. <laughs> No, of course not. You're free to have boundaries. You're free. You're free. So I hope this was helpful to any of you who may have felt gaslit for having boundaries because you're not supposed to be separate. But now you have a reason that you can give or for just understanding and feeling that confidence in yourself for setting the boundaries. Something on this path that makes sense. And um, for those of you who may have not thought it was okay, I, I hope this is some food for thought. So feel free to share your thoughts below. And um, I'm really looking forward to reading them. I'll see you all next time.